Yeah. All right. After multiple times of trying to get this to work, I think we've got it working now. Apparently, YouTube is having some issues. Who found that out? Nate, you were the one that you heard that from somebody or? Yeah, my little boy was trying to watch videos on YouTube and couldn't get anything to pop up. And after we tried everything, we finally went to another device and looked and was like, okay, well, it's not working here either. So it's not working anywhere. Man, so YouTube quantity. is just down. Yeah. So unfortunately, for those who are going to join us in for the for the chat, we're going to have to hopefully get everybody. Uh, we'll get the update here. Then we've got that live. Yeah, we do have it live on. Yep, there we go. Okay, so we are live on Facebook. We're not live on YouTube. Sorry about that, everybody. And uh, hopefully, keep an eye on the chat. And Devin's saying that several YouTube streams are down. This is going to be weird. Apparently, you can't do the chat in Facebook. You can on the right, but it does not show uh, in here. But anyway, so aside from all this cluster, this just adds to the mess. Yesterday, we had the issue with timing, with uh, scheduling, and now today yeah. we have the issue with YouTube being, you know, bratty. It's uh, yeah. It happens. So anyway. Usual. Um, what what have you guys been up to aside from that? I know you got a couple new games, Kev, and you were showing them on your channel. Yeah, I have four uh, rolling the door, actually. I had uh, Harrier, uh, not Harrier, Harrier from uh, Hornet Leader. You know, I, I need a day. And uh, <laughs> you wouldn't believe day, crazy day today. Um, that, I got a punch copy of Jack, the first version as the little completest in me that hey why not have an uh, unpunched version of that actually bought it from uh, Salvatore Bata the uh, guy who did unconditional surrender mm -hmm. that from him and then I got uh, time for trumpets and next war Vietnam in so it's been a nice, nice. From, from game perspective um, and, I, and I've been playing the last stand so yeah. a little bit of everything coming in see if this show no it's not coming through too yeah, clear, but back. last war of Vietnam Next war, Vietnam. <laughs> Next war, Vietnam. Not last, last war. Always oh, it. Not so last war. It. That's a bad thing. <laughs> but uh, uh, what about you, Nate? I actually, I had two come in today. I got by Stealth and C, the production copy. Mm -hmm. and, oh, I got that too. Uh, I might have to go over that one again, the production version, see how it came out. And then I also had one small step come in. And there's nice. a little funny story that I'm going to give Uvi, Uve a little um, crap over it because he meant to send an email to one of his associates at Academy Games. It was like, hey, do you think we should send Nate one of the uh, One Small Step games to review? And he sent that email to me instead of his guy. Mm -hmm. And I responded back to him. And I was like, well, I'm going to go with yes, considering you sent this email to Nate you know, to Gimpy, that uh, you should probably do that. And he responds back to me. He's like, damn, I'm glad I wasn't insulting you in that email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the other email he sent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think he yeah, so I, because I haven't reviewed his uh, Storm Over game yet because you won't get online with me. It's all your fault. I told you uh, back in September I tried to set a date with you, and I couldn't get you to commit to a date. <laughs> I know because I suck. It's all my fault. You can't but get date. You I, can't get Kev to date you, huh? I am going to be doing uh, one small step with uh, the wifey because nice. I really like the sound of it. And I think it's a good crossover game for her because it's a worker placement um, engine building game. Mm -hmm. And she really loves those. There's one similar to it called Energy Empire. I don't know if you guys have ever played that mm -hmm. one. All right. So you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah. And she absolutely loves that game. She played that game anytime. And this, the the sound of it sounds very similar. So we're uh, actually going to sit down and play that one together. And I love the space theme. So mm -hmm. we're going to have to try it out. It sounds, it sounds like a war game I know of, but uh, we can get to that later. What war game? <laughs> no, this actually, yeah. this one, I actually have a, um, a preview coming out for that. I backed it on Kickstarter because, you know, I'm a space nerd. So I was like, yeah, no problem. It's it's Academy Games. It's uh, the Apollo program. I'm jumping all over that. Yeah. So I like went and got everything. <laughs> it, it looks like a, a good game and it looks like it's very well made too. Although with Academy Games, it's, 
that's kind of run of the mill. They they always have good quality. <laughs> Let me ask you guys this though: Is DVG releasing like the updated version of Fleet Commander Nimitz? Is I'm that coming out? No, I no. know they had talked about it, and I could have swore that it was going to be part of this Kickstarter group they had done, like the one before last or so. But I can't remember if it was part of that or not. I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure, but I know that Uva is listening because he uh, made a comment on Facebook. He said, <laughs> so he's definitely watching, and uh, so hopefully we'll get. Uh, you know, Todd's asking, have we? talked already about the MMP sale and did you guys pick up anything we have not talked about that yet Todd but put on your smoking jacket kick back and yeah we'll chat about, about that <laughs> the wardrobe <laughs> but so speaking of that now that Todd brought that up has anybody picked up anything from the MMP sale yet Kev's well, looking up I'm everything on the MMP sale I'm still actually in talks with my buddy about what they're doing as far as their review thing the remember i told you mm -hmm. the guy that started working with mmp and i don't know which way they're going with it so i can't really make a judgment call until he lets me know what they're doing specifically so i'm kind of in limbo as far as mmp is concerned right now Did unfortunately they even send out review copies to anybody that was what he was talking to me about was that he was pushing them to mm -hmm. Yeah. start doing the review copy thing and get their stuff out into more people's hands so more people yeah. can see it and he's like look i own a game store this guy does reviews for war games he comes into my store all the time i know him we've got a good relationship you know let's work with him and i'm like dude i'm, I'm here let me know what you need i'm happy to work with you because yeah. he's a great guy i love his store gamers armory in, in Cary, north carolina if you guys ever go great place absolutely love the store but uh until i find out like what's going on with air i don't want to like pull any big triggers unfortunately so yeah i'm kind of in limbo but when i do find out i would be jumping on some mmp stuff one way or the other yeah i'm just responding to a post somebody had uh, said hey uh can't access it and so i'm telling everybody it's on my facebook page just put the yeah. link up in like the previous whatever 10 posts that you made and yeah, tried well, to restart trying it to, 10 times. Trying to do phones. And say, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm just trying to, let me. Uh, do you guys want me. to share it out? Feel free. Yeah, I did do a share, uh, a general share. So, and if anybody is watching the show and would like to uh, share that out to the war game groups, we'd appreciate that. It would make it a little easier for me. Yeah, so <laughs> trying to run to, multiple things at one time. Yeah, yeah. Gonna, restart it three times to get it to actually <laughs> freaking, work. Freaking YouTube. So now you ready? Start hit the topic. No, 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 no. We'll get to that. We'll get to the M and P sale first. Uh, well, you were talking. Well, so, what, so, uh, so, are you buying anything? I'm not buying anything. I all the good stuff I own, and all the really well, good stuff's not on sale, and all the crappy stuff is super cheap. So, if you want to, I try, thought you wanted Day of Days. Did I say crappy? I didn't mean to say crappy. What I meant to say was <laughs> the things that aren't selling really well are. Uh, very cheap, like Day of Days, yep. massive monster SCS game, thirty bucks for, for, from one hundred and twenty, crazy prices. They're mm -hmm. selling that for thirty bucks. Thirty bucks. 30 bucks. So no, get me, damn. If you wanna, you wanna do it, then do it. But that probably tells you something about the value. And I bet you a bunch of people will buy stuff and flip it on the market later on, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I Hell, I've got one of theirs on my list. Was it the the last Blitzkrieg? Is that yeah. do I have the right name? Yeah, that uh, it it's in my stack of to dos that I'm slowly working my way th down through. It just takes a little while because I I take and film way 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 too many videos for each game. <laughs> Let me see if I can share this. Yeah, I'm just I just shared it once, but. Uh... Uh, you yeah, guys are just what? so worried about it. They'll they'll find no, us. I'm just right? trying to be just trying to be. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just because I had just shared it out to board war games and a few different. Okay, if you did, if you did war games, that's great. So, yeah, we are the beacon of light in that world of darkness out there. They're they're gonna flock to us, moss to the flame, man. Yeah. Holy crap! You have a really high opinion of yourself. <laughs> have you seen me? Look at this. <laughs> this, is, this is why I have a high opinion. You just uh, can't, get, you can't get that big old pile of something anywhere. 
Todd yeah. says uh, brazen chariots and uh, greatest day is eighty five dollars from two hundred and forty five. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly, right. OCS that, Korea down to thirty bucks. Wait, isn't now the that, greatest day one of those monsters too? Yeah, but it's an SCS game, so you know, I if, if of all the games that are on sale, you got to really like SCS to want to grab that because it, it has some. I think it has some challenges, but that's just me. Well, every well, board game has some challenges. I can no, tell you one I mean, game. Like it's freaking like, never mind. I would no, say actually, one game. Kev, I'm going to be working with you a lot here soon because I am struggling my way through um, fudging nut the thin red lines games. That big monster, Deadly Northern Lights. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the other one. Yeah, De Deadly under Northern Lights. Under, no, uh, under an iron sky. I mm. am struggling to get my mind wrapped around that thing, and it is, it's wearing on me. That one is a beast. It is. A we should all beast. jump in and be vassal. Yeah, it's um well, it's a big vassal module too. But you know, it it's a real war game, and not just anyone can grab that game and play it. So you should be proud that you're playing it, right? I mean, there mm -hmm. are oh definitely would m maybe want a copy of that, but could never play it. Or so, two or three copies. Or my no three. my anal <laughs> my analogy <laughs> is that. All right, so you've got your your regular war games that's like going to TGI Fridays, going to Chili's. It, it's comforting. It's stuff that you know. You can right. kind of jump from one to another, but it's it's stuff that you understand. And this this is like that high end restaurant you take the wife to once in a lifetime, right? That has like no <laughs> prices on the menu because right. if you have to ask, you can't afford it. That's what I compare this yeah. game to. Right, and the, you, the you creme de la the, creme of war games. Right, and you say to the waiter, you say, I'd like the Shadow Beyond, and he goes, uh, Sir, are you aware of what it is? And you go, oh, I know what it is. I'll have four of them. And uh, you realize that was a bad choice. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. kind of like that. And I'm not saying it's the world's best uh, war game or anything like that. I think it has some challenges and some flaws, but it, it, uh, it it's pretty cool effort. For a first a first war game published it's it gets huge marks just for that you know it's not like he he said oh you know i'm gonna do a i'm gonna do a card based game with four blocks and three oh. circles on the map, right i mean it's a real war game and it's pretty cool from that perspective yeah. pretty good the guy just yeah. prop from for that alone right not even and just that but the optional rules that are in it oh, they, they, yeah, i'm yeah. trying to play it without the option uh, without the optional ones you know mm -hmm. right. the the nuclear the biological chemical warfare all that type stuff the supply yeah. limited right. ammunition i'm not even touching that stuff i'm right, leaving that right, to the right. side yeah, you know we'll just trying to get it right? to the yeah just the meat of this game is so yep. thick it's just tearing me apart so if you sorry i didn't mean to get us off of mmp but it's, well, it's been okay. on my mind. No, it's all right. Well, I mean, this is kind of like a free-form bullshit session anyway, so yeah. that's all. Um, what, what, uh, what's in, what would help probably is if you've played some SPI games in the past, uh, even their magazine games, some of the older ones, and I'm struggling to think of one right now off the top of my head that might be relevant, but the case structure of the rules and the layout of the rules and even, even to a certain extent the rule wording – might if you play one of those or two of those and then go tackle this thing you'll see that there's similarity in the yeah. system and then it's refined and updated with like say the air war and stuff like that so yeah anyway oh, it's 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 deep talking about yeah. the the air supremacy for the the mega hexes mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and you're trying to figure out who has air supremacy and then you've got basically two levels of the, the air war going on because you're worrying uh -huh. about air supremacy but then you're worrying about the actual air combat that's going on yeah. i think of it as like the level beneath yeah. that i just so in depth i'm like i said i'm still struggling through the rule book and i don't want to try to force it so i've been sitting here like reading it reading it reading over again comparing the components making sure i've got everything right because i don't want to start filming it and then bomb right. it I would rather wait weeks to film it and yeah. film it properly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that's a much better approach because I take the opposite approach and just film it. And if I screw it up, I just go, oh, sorry. <laughs> so, um, but you can take one of the smaller scenarios, the first, like if, even if you played the Berlin scenario to start with. There's I'm, I'm doing scenario two when I film it, and it's just the central map. Right. So, okay. So, why don't you. 
set up the Berlin scenario. It's 15 counters and just get the mechanics of the combat and all that sort of stuff down. And then you can go to the second scenario, which has the air, a little bit of the air war stuff that goes on and the flak and AA and try, then try that. Cause then you've only got to worry about the air war to, to, to get it right. And then you can not worry about getting the combat stuff right. Cause you've already kind of worked that out. That's an idea, just an idea. No, that's not a bad idea actually. Yeah. Get my, uh, my head around a small piece before yeah, something, yeah, something a little it, bigger. It's 10 hexes. You're playing with like 10 hexes and 10 counters. So it's, it's cool. Well, I figured, oh, well, you know, second scenario, it's only five turns. How hard could it be? <laughs> <laughs> List of freaking units in it yeah. is like this long, and then I got to turn the page. <laughs> yeah, it took me two weeks to play four turns uh, of the of the campaign of the, the Deathly Northern Lights. So, yeah, yeah good luck. I, I think it's a a war game for someone who wants to say they've played like a serious ass war game, right? But yeah. or, or just the top simulation. Theory, think, right? Cause there's a lot of, well, I want to do this. So in order to do that, I got to do these seven things first, right? So you got to kind of work, work your way through stuff. Uh, yeah. You almost have to have like logistics knowledge, actual real world experience to know what kind of decisions to make. Right. Right. And I don't have that. <laughs> you work it out. It's okay. You're smart. You work it out. Smart. Yeah, I'm a crayon eater. <laughs> crayon. Speaking, of, speaking of crayon eaters, I do have some edible crayons here. <laughs> so why is that not surprising? One one little thing before we go on to the to the uh, uh, awards that uh, Todd was correcting he said greatest day is a grand tactical system. It's GTS, not SCS. Greatest day is, no, I said day of days. It, you also said greatest day too. Oh, okay. He kind of oh. meant one and said the other. Right. So regardless, let's get 30 meat. bucks is. Oh, no. Well, it's 85 for that one, yeah. Yeah, it's 85 for the other one. Yeah, and that's probably a good buy if you want to get into that system, I would imagine. So we'll get into the meat of the show, which is what everybody's here for, and that is the Charles S. Roberts Awards. And that is um, what everybody has been wanting to uh, talk about. Ready to go. We'll start off with the best ancients to pre-Napoleonic era board war game. Uh, Nevsky, Two Tons of Russian Collision, 1240 to 1242, won that, and it beat out Peloponnesian War, Freeman's Farm, 1777. Um, is that pre-Napoleonic? Uh, Command Colors Medieval, and then Al Nafi's uh, Imperium Romanum. So um, I think out of all those, I, what's everybody's opinion? They think that Nevsky rates it, or would you differ with your opinion? Go ahead. Kev, you want to go first? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll put it this way. I've only played one of the five they've listed down, mm -hmm. which is Peloponnesian War. And I think that's a good one. I think it's mm -hmm. an excellent system for the game. Mm -hmm. But without having more extensive knowledge of the others, I can't rate it against it. Of course, I would pick that one, but it's the one that I know. I am a little curious of why some other games, like um, the Men of Honor, uh, a man of iron rather tri pack is it because that game was a bunch of other games packed together that had been previously released yeah i think it's a reprint sure. net new right so yeah, it doesn't also, count yeah. also isn't that 2020 not 20 um 19? yeah not 22 yeah so that'll be in next year's oh i thought the it counted. Oh, my bad. I just thought that was a good value for the amount mm -hmm. of game that you got per box and what you were paying. You know, so yeah. excellent value. But yeah, Peloponnesian War is a good system. It's the one where you have to play one side to a point, and then depending on how well you have to do, it switches you over to the other side, and it's yep. solitaire type play. So if you play too well, you could end up hurting yourself in a way. It, it makes you kind of think about the choices that you're making. It's an interesting tactic that I haven't seen many others make when it comes to uh, that type of gameplay and solitaire gameplay in general. Commanding right. Colors Medieval, that's one of the block games, so I won't play it because I'm not into to block games. But it's and a board the, system now. I just, it, it's, a blo it's the block games. They're blocks that you see both sides. Eh. Oh so no, the blocks just haven't work. been a million thing. It's like, it's like a vertical counter. <laughs> Pretty much. It's a big thick it's a expensive counter, is what it is. It stands <laughs> like a vertical counter. Yeah. When you have a house full of 
little toddlers running around, if they hear wooden blocks moving together, oh, they yeah. just think toys. They want to gather them up. I already had to deal with one swallowing a magnet the other damn day, so don't need them eating my game pieces on top of it. What attracted him to that? Oh, sorry. Ah, that's dead a, joke. That's a polarizing joke. Oh, wow. <laughs> Boom. Uh, All right, so <laughs> has, has either of you guys actually played the Nevsky one? I've messed around with it a little bit. I have not played all the way through yet. Yeah. Um, it's pretty interesting because of the whole campaigning system and how you really have to. It's 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 very logistics heavy. I think not logistics heavy, but it's it's there's a lot of logistics you have to think about because you have to be prepared to go on your campaign and do. You have to think ahead of uh, ahead of yourself. You can't just say you know, hey, what I like to do is just, hey, we're gonna go brawl. Let's go punch things in the face, and that's it. <laughs> Well, Here, think, you've got to think ahead of time. <laughs> I think of all of them, it's probably the most innovative uh, mm -hmm. system that was released last year in in what is arguably a ridiculously broad category, right? I mean, it's pre ancient. Yeah. I was just Pina. thinking that. Give me a freaking break, right? Uh, but I didn't wasn't a huge fan of the art. On, so I had a look at that game, a pre production copy with. Minich, and we had to look at it. I wasn't a huge fan of the artwork on the box, but the map is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. The were good. I've heard good things about the gameplay. I'd probably argue the Peloponnesian War is also a reprint. I know it's been updated and tweaked, and there's new components and all the rest of it, but that, that's the old Victory Games Mark Herman title. And, yeah. you know, I own a copy of that, and I, I think it's a cool game. It's a great idea. Command and Colors Medieval, yeah, okay, so we've got 42 versions of that system and they're all a little different, so no big deal there. And Nofi's game is a train wreck from everything. I've, I've read the rules, the, the, the combat system's messy and abstract and the, the scenario setups that have don't, aren't right and there's not enough counters in the box and it's one yeah. of those long decision games boxes with hardly anything in it and it just is- Say no more. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even know how that got nominated, let alone it was probably yeah. by the end of the 2020 game, the 2019 games came out. So, so we go on to the next one, which is the best Napoleonic era board war game, La Bataille Ooh. du Batin, uh, Moravian Sun, Napoleon, uh, Napoleon Retreats, Campaign in France, Part 2, Quattro Bride, 1815, Last Eagles. That is the winner. And then Waterloo, Campaign 1815. Now this I have is zero knowledge or exposure to napoleonic games because i really just don't have yeah. a big interest in napoleonics except for um, mark herman's waterloo that came out in c3i other than that i just it's not my jam which is a great game by the way right yeah. it is it's a neat game. it's a really neat game yeah and in the audience please chime in if you've got your own uh comments to add because we definitely like having the interaction with everybody unfortunately we don't have the same as we normally do with youtube so thanks yeah. youtube <laughs> uh, so i gotta go with mo on this uh the napoleonic errors just have not been a game system like any of them that i've been overly interested in so i have like no experience with any of those games hate to say it it's not <laughs> hating on the games they could be wonderful it's just not an error yeah. that i'm interested in yeah, I, I, I would say, well, I think Waterloo Campaign 1815 is Herman's game, right? So, um, yes. Yeah, okay. So that, I would I would probably pick that over the Quattro Braga game. I've played that twice, the Quattro Braga game, twice, and it's okay. But it, but it, and it's beautiful. And I love the system, but I, I think there's some of the, like, uh, what's the right, uh, order of entry, Timing doesn't let the battle play out the way it probably should or yeah. could be did. Uh, and I'm not saying I want it to be on a railroad, but you can't, you, the French have no chance. <laughs> it's yeah. over well before it needs to be over, and that's a pity. And if I don't have thoughts or opinions on anything else, Lavatai should be in there because it's Lavatai. So, mm -hmm. whatever that is, the game, you know, God bless them, right? That's awesome. So, they should be in there. Um, but yeah, I, I would have picked Waterloo Campaign 1815 because it's super innovative, very, very uh, approachable, 
I just and it's unusual, but it really gives the feel of the battle. And and you can play a game in forty five minutes. It, it, yeah. and you just you're Napoleon or Wellington. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. A lot of great game. The only one that I would compare, or not the only one I compare it to, but the one I would compare it to as far as like attractiveness would be W eighteen fifteen, which is you know the mm-hmm. Waterloo eighteen fifteen. You can bang out in fifteen minutes, and. Mm-hmm that's a pretty neat little game now some people may say ah, it's really not a war game well play it and then come back and talk about it because it's actually a pretty neat little system you yeah. know so yeah if you can what did you like in, in, out of those Mo? i mean uh, so which, which one would you pick you did, out of these, you i would only pick i would only pick waterloo campaign 1815 because it's the only one i have any experience with so i could not speak with any um experience on those because it's it, napoleonic no one cares about whether you play the game or not it's all just subjective bullshit well in my experience or in my expert opinion, Waterloo Your campaign. Expert, opinion. <laughs> so now we go to best post Napoleonic to pre World War II era board game. We've got Brave Little Belgium, Crusade and Revolution, the Spanish Civil War, Costoza Fields of Doom, Death Valley Battles for the Shenandoah, which won, and Triumph of Chaos uh, V2, the Russian Civil War, 1918 to 1921. And as I said, Death Valley Battles for the Shenandoah won. Right. And uh, out of those, the only one that I have played is Brave Little Belgium because Civil War is just another era I'm just really not into. Well, I'd agree with you that I think Brave Little Belgium was a great one. I, it was a neat I game. played that one. I reviewed it. It it was a nice, easy, <laughs> slim down box, not weighted down with components, rules, anything. You could just whip it out, play it. Nice area. It actually got me more into area control games because previously I hadn't really cared for them all that much. Hmm. And that one I really enjoyed sitting down with. I thought it was a real ingenious streamlined system. Now, Death Valley, that's the one that was by GMT, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm almost wondering that Death Valley won maybe because it was by GMT which is a bigger publisher and maybe made it a little more well-known because I had seen people talking about Brave Low Belgium all the time. I saw pictures of that being posted everywhere. So the fact that it didn't win kind of throws me just a little bit. Kev? Yeah. Um, so I played my first game of Death Valley <coughs> last week. Amazing box full of battles. Uh, there's a... Mm-hmm metric ton of goodness in the box lots of maps lots of counters quite an involved system it, it kind of like great battles of history but with better ranged fire and different command structures and stuff like that i think it's a great system i could see why it would have won unfortunately i haven't played break little belgium i don't want a copy of that and all the others i have no experience with uh so I'd probably lean in on Death Valley just from a value for money perspective. I think if you wanted to explore tactical ACW, that's your first stop, right? Because it's you've probably got two years worth of gameplay in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's uh, it looks like it's got a lot of stuff, and everything that I've seen out of the box, it's just a a lot. Right, and plus, uh, I mean, and once again, uh, that category is, is huge. Uh, yeah. How many war games are published every year? 400? Probably 300? in that range, three to 500. Yeah. Um, surely we could have had a few more candidates. You'd and, think, but that'll, we'll, we'll kind of, you know, to use the, uh, some we'll, of the buzzwords that they use today, we'll pivot and we'll circle back on that later. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now we go uh, to the. Here best, it is. Here it is. What's that? Now we get into the, now we get into the real meat. Best World War II era board war game. Here's where the debate starts. Now, this is not where the debate starts. This is where we get we get into the meat of the discussion here. <laughs> um, Brazen Chariots, oh. Battles of Fort, uh, Battles Fort Brook, mm-hmm. Last Hundred Yards, mm-hmm. Stalingrad Forty Two, Southern Russia, June uh, December nineteen forty two. U boat, the board game, Wings of the Motherland. Now, U boat, the board game won for World War Two era board war game. Uh, I know that we all have, I think a lot of people have pretty strong opinions on how this all went. And uh, Nate, I think I'll let you go first because. Okay. I'm going to put it out there. (laughs) And this is an opinion that I know Kev and I think Mo doesn't agree with. I do think that U-Boat should be in the war game category. 
okay? I think it's fine to be included there. It's a little different, all right? It is, in a way, worker placement. It's got an app, which- Kevin just people, put his glasses on. Like, it means he means business now. <laughs> yeah, he means, he means business. But I will give it that when people say, you know, war game, traditional war games, mm-hmm. U-Boat is definitely not the first thing that's coming to mind. No. And this one, I got to say, for its flaws, if I'm being honest, I like the game. All right. I think it was innovative. It was new. They tried things in, in different directions. I really like the the model of the ship. That's mm-hmm. excellent. I mean, it's really cool, especially when you get the, the 3D components and you put those on it and it just makes it stand out. Hell, I even 3D printed my own model of it. So I could have a, a plastic version and just in case the cardboard one uh, broke down. So trust me when I say I like the game. I like the, the plotting your directions and figuring out where you're going. Yeah. But we have to acknowledge the fact that the game did have a lot of flaws. There were a lot of flaws with the app when it first came out. When it came to solitaire play, the game bombed originally. They had to tweak the rules significantly. Uh, not just for solitaire play, but probably anything under four players, they had to tweak the rules. They had to tweak the rules for four players because they didn't have enough orders to actually accomplish uh, what people were trying to do. By the time you got your ship uh, started, engines going, pointed in the direction you wanted to do, you had pretty much already used up your orders for the round, which was not a good thing for the game for those who haven't played it. So is it a good game? Yes. Is it a good game? World War II era war game. Yes. Is it the top war game for the World War II era? I probably wouldn't go that far. I easily would say last hundred yards would beat it. Stalingrad 42 beat it. There's just too many errors when it first came out before they, they tweak some of that stuff. And it is so far outside of the scope of what is generally considered a war game that I don't necessarily think it deserves the top rating. It's a good game for some people, but it's definitely not a, yeah. uh, the, the top. It doesn't would, beat out the, it's contenders. I would right. say it's not a war game. I would say it is really more of a strategy war themed game than it is a war game. Um, it's really, you know, what you're, what you're struggling to say, I think was that it doesn't fit in the war game category. It's a war themed game. You know, it's really a Euro war theme game, but it's got a, it, it's definitely a strategy game. It deserves to be up there for the awards, but it should be in another category, in my opinion. Kev? Yeah, so I think I think Gimpy kind of struck on a lot of the things that are good about the game, right? And uh, obviously a lot of the challenges that it had out of the gate. And when you raise that much money from people and uh, invest that much time and effort, you would think that, Playtesting might have exposed some of the challenges versus the what appears to be a, a, a naked money grab. But that said, I've played all <clears throat> all of the games on that list except for Wings of the Motherland. You boot, uh, I have, or you boot, you boat. I have not played, but I watched it played for about an hour and a half. We were sitting around in a circle, and uh, four guys were having drinks. And uh, my takeaway from watching the game played was that it is a, a, as you said, a war-themed worker placement Euro game with a an app that has a very definitive shelf life. And yes. I have no issue with that. And that absolutely belongs in all the categories except for war game. So, uh, of, uh, so I don't know why all that happened or why it wins all the other awards that are further down the list. Why? <laughs> We know yeah. why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know. we'll get to that. But so I, I, I think for the return of the Charles S. Robert Awards to have that happen first back speaks volumes about what, about the, the intentions or the uh, the seriousness that we should uh, accredit any decision or any any award that anybody wins in this category. When you look at Brazen Chariots, Mm -hmm. um, amazing system, innovative. It's the third or fourth title out uh, for that system. It's uh, much more refined now. It has great uh, gameplay and great theme, and it's, as I said, innovative. 
Last hundred yards, another innovative. Who, who would have believed Very. to see a brand new tactical war game system set in World War II that would uh, you, that would be as popular as it has been? I mean, it's it's a fantastic system, and if you haven't tried it, you should. You stupid mm -hmm. if you don't. Yeah. And Stalingrad. Uh, I mean, that Zokbon system is going to go on forever, and that is a and it's proven that it can run from one map Normandy 44 through to a multi-map Stalingrad 42 mm -hmm. and still be a very playable and very accessible war game. I will give credit to you book for open, cracking open the door, sticking a foot in it and saying, hey, look, war themed games aren't that bad. But the moment you move someone from that game to what I'll call a real war game, you're going to slap them in the face because it's not worth a placement and it's not a euro and it doesn't have probably won't have apps. So, anyway. well, I, I think, I, I think it fits. That's why I was saying, I think it fits like in a strategy game. There should be another, you know, uh, category for it. And that goes to, you know, all the other awards that it won there. That's one of the things I think the Charlie awards could, you know, it's growing pains too. It's the first year back. It's understandable. This was all done very fast with a lot of hard work by the people who were involved in it. So I would say uh, lessons learned for next year would be maybe right. get some sort of oversight that would look and, and see these things and say, I don't think U-Boot belongs in this category. It should be in like maybe war strategy category, war theme strategy, whatever. It should be like strategy game rather than just a traditional hex encounter or traditional war game. You know, sure. uh, it's it's definitely like... People say coin is, you know, coin is very innovative and it is a real nice mesh of Euro and war game themes, but it is more heavily war game themed than U-Boat is. And that definitely fits, coin fits very securely, in my opinion, in the war game realm. U-Boat is more of a strategy game that has a war theme on it. And it really, to me, I think it should be in a strategy category. It can be in here, well, absolutely, because it's a war theme game, but it I think in a strategy what category. I think what we might be running into here is Semantic. with an influx of, <laughs> of new people. I mean, that's part of it, of new people, of a younger audience. So if you took that game box, all right, think of the, the game box, big, mm -hmm. it has a big submarine on it. And if you told them the basic gist of, of what that game was and you asked them, well, what type of game is this? What type of board game is this? Oh, that's a, mm -hmm. that's a war game. Right. That that's what someone would say who wasn't necessarily a traditional war gamer. They would easily say, yeah, submarine, you're sailing around, you're trying to, to mm -hmm. torpedo enemy shipping and you can be attacked by enemy air fighters, and all that type crap. They, they're going to say that's a war game, not yeah. understanding that yeah. traditional yeah. war games are different that's, than that's that. Almost a side, that's a side. The that's a side function or a, or a, derivative of what you actually spend your time doing. You spend your time grabbing your tokens and moving them down a track and then moving your little your little man around around the sub going, oh, I'm an engineer, but I'm going to go make food or I'm a, I'm a navigator. Now I'm going to go fix the engine because I've got an extra token. Well, it's kind of just come on, right? I, I mean, it just, it doesn't even, it, I mean, you may. That's what I'm talking about. That the game is good and innovative, but it does have its flaws. What's innovative about it? It's they're making make hamburgers instead, right? I look for for a younger guy. I like to see people including apps. I know you guys don't like apps, but I like apps. I, I, I think apps oh, apps are good for a point, but they have a shelf life. But you can't play. Oh, the it's game Rob that I was debating on that. The, you the apps. You can't play the game without the app, and and that no, app. You can't. That app, that app will die at some point when that operating system gets upgraded. That you're done, and then you just put however many hundred hundreds of dollars into that game. You, so and that's for any game with an app. That's for any game. Because yeah. you're done. I, I, I've said this to others before. I think I talked to Mo about this. I think apps are a direction that uh, war games and any type of war game can go in mm -hmm. and have some real cool features like. I've mentioned before ambush. Think about ambush with an app instead of the the scenario sure. book. So Perfect. you would never know what that next hex is going to be, right? Perfect. Yep.
Yep. But the thing is, is with something like that, you have to release it as open open source because oh. at that point, you know, from a technical standpoint, if you don't release it as open source, that is going to have a shelf life on it because the technology will be surpassed or it'll just they'll just abandon it or whatever. And then you'll have a game like take, for example, Tactics 2 or something like that. You, you can go buy that at a, you know, a, a garage sale for five bucks, throw it on your table and play the full game. If you buy U-Boat, just for example, because we're talking about app games in you know, 40 years, are you going to be able to play that? You know, like you could a 40 year old other warrior. That's, that's the, that's the drawback to apps. They're, it does put a shelf life on them right. and I, people have to understand that. If, if someone wants to build, uh, apps to enable solo play, I think mm -hmm. that would be fantastic. And yeah. I, I'm not anti app. I'm good God. I've lived in tech for 30 years, dude. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm all about having apps if they make sense and if they're supported and if they're right, but just, but just but making a game app dependent. Yeah. Particularly when it's crappy. I mean, you see, have you seen, oh, well, you've played it, right? So it's just, it's just, <laughs> dude, it's just, it's a garbage app. Uh, it really is. Sorry. So the next one no, we no, have you, is, it's your opinion. <laughs> I mean, by all no, yeah, you're right. It is. It's an opinion. Uh, it's like an asshole. Everyone has one. <laughs> I, I think they needed more people who were doing what we're doing here, debating the pros and cons when they were kind of picking these lists out. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. There needs to be some sort of some sort of oversight, some you know involvement with other people to look at these things and and debate these things, so that way you can have a better representation. And we're not saying to not include U-boat. I mean, at least I'm not. I think it's it's cool and 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 has its place, and it does have its place in the war game world as far as being in the correct categories you know right. just, i don't think it you can't have that with it's like having chess or and chess and go and then having tiddlywinks they don't match their games but they are different levels and and well right. that may not be the best analogy but you know right, right. We'll, we'll come up with a euro themed war game segment yeah. and stick in there crossover and crossover war game something like that yeah which yeah. would be fine i would agree with that mm -hmm. right. there we go. so Maybe we have the <laughs> The next, uh, next one is best post-World War II, Cold War, and hypothetical era board war game. Blue Water Navy, The War at Sea, Hearts and Minds, Vietnam, 6575, Less Than 60 Miles, Red Storm, The Air War over Central Germany, 1987, and World War 85, Storming the Gap, which won the award. So, uh, Nate? Durr. Durr. Come on. <laughs> Dirty, Look, dirty, dirty. Like, it, like it's a question. World War 85 blows the shit out of the, the others. I mean, it was... Just I don't know. That's a strong ass. category right there. That's that a is strong a strong category. category. A now look, that great. less than 60 miles, I'm sure is good. Now I've tried that one, but I know the same people as thin red lines. So I would expect good things, but compared against what hearts and minds, Vietnam, I'm sorry. I, I love compass. They do good stuff, but they bombed it with hearts and minds, not no. necessarily the game specifically, but the solitaire mm -hmm. gameplay <clears throat> is where they bombed it because it shipped with so many errors it's as far as the cards and the rule book were concerned. I mean, I, I, hell, I had like a 20 minute segment when I was reviewing it just of the errors from the cards and the, the rule book yeah. trying to figure out how many numbers I was supposed to have of what, they they didn't do that well the game itself i thought they did excellent i loved something that game did which was mm -hmm. the big mounted map and they had the the snippets right the little bits of rules that you needed to know printed on the map and it was on each side of the map so no matter which player you were you know red or blue you had everything you needed right there in front of you it was excellent i mean they yeah. had some real good stuff but then there were certain things like leaving charts that you needed in the uh, rule book itself instead of making it a player aid right. you needed one more sheet of cardstock why wouldn't you have done that that that's a ease of play uh, uh what's the phrase aid. i'm thinking of yeah it's an ease of play aid right yeah ease of play i mean they they didn't take a step that would have made it a lot easier for, for people to play the game. So with those errors, there's no way that one's going to win top. But then you compare it to something like War to War 85 that went the distance in every single direction you could go. Mm -hmm. The the Kickstarter had a buttload of stretch goals. You had the, the mats that you could order. You could They even did the canvas map yeah. for the eight maps Big pressed fold together. Gap, yeah. yeah, for fold a gap excellent choice there they even had the cards where you could 
play it as more of a miniatures type game, giving you the stats in inches or centimeters or whatever measurement, whatever scale you wanted to go with, or it was six millimeter, 30 millimeter, uh, I forget all the different sizes, but they gave you that option. So you could play it as a, a miniatures type game if you wanted yeah. to. Yeah. Come on, what other war game provides all those different ways to play and has the solitaire deck uh, to go with it on top of it? Yeah. The, the the rest of them are competing against the the car that came out with every feature you could ever have, right? Bluetooth yeah. smart everything. I think they kicked butt on World War 85. I think this thing is an app. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just uh, needs the app. I'm jacking with you, bro. It's all good. <laughs> no, uh, look, I know I sound like a fanboy, but I, Mo, I mean, you know this. We were playtesting World, mm -hmm. uh, World War 85 years ago and yeah. to see how much effort and and work went into that to turn it into what eventually yeah. released i mean yeah sure. it absolutely deserves the award and I'm, I'm not saying any of the others are bad uh per se you know mm -hmm. less than 60 miles i'm sure is good i haven't had experience with blue water navy or red storm yeah. uh but heart uh, hearts and minds would have needed a lot more work to to be in competition yeah i haven't played a good vietnam game yet but um uh... Except for VG's old Vietnam. Mm. Lock and load tactical Vietnam. Well, that's, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I meant like at the, at that scale, at Hearts and Minds scale, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh, that was, tell me that wasn't disappointing though. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah, because I edition. so wanted that, the campaign of Vietnam where you could play through all the years and, and have the war waging back and forth and deal with the, the gorillas and, uh, the the bombers and all the other stuff they had going on, the asymmetrical warfare, right, and the way that it was fought, it sounded like a great idea. I think they just dropped the ball on execution. Well, it's like that other game, uh, no trumpets, no game, or no trumpets, no drums, or whatever no trumpets, it is. No drums. Yeah, uh, that is highly flawed as well. That that was that was problematic. Of, of all those, I've read the rules for Blue Water Navy. I was going to play with a buddy, and we read. I read the rules, and I was like, eh, this looks really interesting, mm -hmm. and. It's derivative, I think, of uh, breaking the chains. I think it is. Yes. Uh, so yeah. it, but it's simplified and less less risky. Uh, breaking the mm -hmm. chains had a lot of eye rolling going on. So I was super excited about that, and I think the next volume of that uh, is Pacific. out now. Blue China, so not blue, um, South China Sea, or whatever. It well, is. South so, China Sea. Yeah, you're talking about breaking the chains. Yeah, there's South China Sea, and then there's an Indian. Uh, ocean yeah. that's coming out yeah. too. I, think, I think they're the new wave of uh, of good sort of fleet style battles. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Less than sixty miles. I didn't I didn't like that game as much as uh, Under an Iron Sky. It's I, I, it really leans in on being a hard more of a hardcore simulation style game versus what I would call a war game, which, which is there's some elements of fun. We found it to be a lot of work uh, and not terribly much fun that said uh it you know it's super popular so for the folks are digging it and red storm i read that i had a look at that game and i read the rules and i was like yeah okay this this is not for daddy <laughs> so uh, <laughs> i've got mine i'm gonna be selling mine I, I i would love to love that system but that's that's uh over my head in terms of level of interest and detail i think well, it's you pointed out to me that you, you thought it felt much more like simulation than it did game. So yeah. less than 60 miles. So that becomes a lot more of a different, well, a different mindset for one. Yeah, you can't absolutely. look at it from a game aspect, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, Blue Water Navy, I have not played it yet. I have the game and I have done like you have looked through the rule book and I'm really excited to play. I just have not set up because it's going to have to be a solo game. Hearts and Minds, same right. thing. Um the disappointing thing and the frustrating thing was it was a third edition and by the third time it should be pretty smooth for any publisher to get that out uh exactly. in fairness to compass they did correct the cards and they got those cards out to everybody so that was great support uh, oh yeah uh, miles. sorry mo let me interject yeah. there uh, i did forget to mention that i will give compass a hundred percent props because it wasn't very long after uh, I had bought Hearts and Minds that I actually got it in the mail. They sent me the sure. counters and cards and, and all that stuff that needed to right. be fixed. So, so that's mass, mass props to them. 
Yeah. And Sorry, I didn't that, mean to interrupt you. But no, no, no. Not only that, they also re released a PDF of those corrections very quick, and then they had the hard copy out to everybody within weeks. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. Red Storm, I have it. Have not played it yet. I uh, just haven't sat down to, to learn that one. World of War 85, you know, just fantastic value. Uh, a lot of game in that box. A massive amount of game in that box. It's, it's amazing. What an amazing Kickstarter that was. It, it got it, was. it got a lot of people into that system, and they're going to keep buying that from now on, right? Yeah, because yeah. uh, I mean, come on, if it's tactical, if it's monster, you know, you could play a small little skirmish type game, or you can play an eight map monster that can take you days or weeks to complete. You know, sides going back and forth, missiles yeah. and mortars and all this other good crap. Ah, it's just awesome in the way <laughs> that you have to play that game. I know I sound like a fanboy, but I, I really like that game. I think they knocked yeah. it out of the park with it. Now it's not yeah. flawless. Of course, there are. Few yeah. things here or there that could have been yeah. tweaked, but for the most part, they did excellent. And yeah, Todd, you're, yeah. go ahead. No, no, you're good. To say, Todd, you're not trolling the stream. I just I'm looking over it because Facebook is different than doing our normal show. So uh, normally, I'll see these questions; they'll pop up in the chat, and I'll be able to throw them into the chat here. But, but we can't do that here. So I'm going to try to scroll back up and look through and see what some people uh, have commented on. And uh, we've got. Uh, Devin saying U boat should never have been on there, but then again, neither he should. He didn't feel that Dune belonged there either because that's a reprint when it was released in '77. Mm -hmm. So that's a good point there. Uh, Todd says Stalingrad 42, no doubt, very good, but not groundbreaking like the other two. And he mentioned Last Hundred Yards and Brazen Chariots, and you know which we had already talked about as well. Last Hundred Yards, very innovative and a, a really cool tactical system. Yeah. Um, Harold Buchanan says, a 1987 Fortress America by Milton Bradley won an award. Confounding Hex Encounter definitionalists, Mo would say it's not a war game. I would, because I have that game. <laughs> and I had that game in 87, and I lost it on deployments. But I do have the reprint that was done by, uh, it was a Fantasy Flight, I think it was, that did the reprint. And I have that, and I would say that's a war game. Um, it's area control, war game. And uh, it's like U-Boat is like Kevin explained and, and Nate had explained as well, you're basically just doing actions for your guys. So that really is more by definition a Euro than it is a war game. Whereas with um, this one here, uh, Fortress America is definitely a war game. Uh, it's obviously uh, a little simpler and a little more gamey aspects to it, but definitely a war game. Uh, and then... Harold says we should embrace the broad appeal and stop trying to define it as our award. Well, it is our award. It's all of our award. So I think that's how we're, we're at least that's how we're, I'm looking at it. It's got nothing to do with that. Uh, that's 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 extraneous comment. Uh, it, that's not what it's about. It's just we're looking at when you look at the the hobby. That's not that's not what it's about, right? So yeah. we're not trying to exclude anything or no. or not in being inclusive it's it's a category that game is in a category that is not the same as every other type of war game out there one of these is not like the others yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah, it just needed to be in a different fun. category it doesn't mean it's not a good game it doesn't mean that it's not fun and all the rest of it. we we laughed our asses off while we were watching these guys play because they were all hammer drunk right it's it was a great time we had a great time yeah. watching them play only because it was a total train wreck, mainly, but it was hilarious, fun, and it's a great experimental game. Train wreck games are fun, though, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> and then uh, Dan Harold says, goal for reward next year is to get the people to vote and agree with Kevin and Mo. There we go. So everybody just agree with us. We're good. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, Hobbies being redefined around us, we should embrace it, um, which I agree with, and, and it is, and we are embracing it. Um, just like we said, I just think that you both should be in a different category. And Todd says same thing. He just thinks another category for you both game. And yeah. World of War is an amazing value, he said. And we are getting down to the end. And Todd says, I feel like I'm trolling the stream. Perhaps I should chill out on the keyboard. <laughs> no, 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 Todd. Chat. This is what we want. Yeah, great. My, yeah. Mike says Red, too, Red Storm is way too complicated, but I love it to death. And, uh, Todd was asking, what is a Napoleon game that takes 45 minutes? That'd be the Waterloo 1815 campaign for Mark Harmon and C3I Magazine. Yeah, C3I Magazine. You need to get and check it out, so it's a good game. Yeah. So now we go to the best sci-fi or fantasy war game. We had Dune, which was the winner, Escape from Hades, 
Red Alert Space Fleet Warfare, Space Infantry Resurgence, and Time of Legends, Joan of Arc. So Devin had said that he thought that Dune should not have been in there because it is, it's a reprint. So that's one of those things that I think is open to debate. Should reprints be considered for an award or not? Yeah, but wasn't that one more of a worker placement or something along those lines too? I didn't play Dune, but I either did I. If I read up on that one, I think it was something like a rondelle, and you were moving your influencers around it or something to that effect. I can't remember the specifics, but I don't I think it would count comment. as a war game. I know zero about Dune, the game, the movie, the book. I've never bought into any of it. I've never paid any attention to it. So I'm completely ignorant to it, honestly. So I can spice and worms, man. Spice and worms. I know exactly. it's about the spice. That's about it. That's that's my and, and Sting was in it. The original. <laughs> that's as yeah. far as I know. <laughs> well, I gotta say, I definitely liked Escape from Hades and Space Infantry Resurgence. Yeah. Uh, as far as Space Infantry goes, I will also give them credit because Space Infantry is another kind of remake but it's a it's a new game in its own right because yeah there was a, a space infantry but resurgence really did take it to the next level mm -hmm. so many more monster types unit types uh the fact that the maps were no longer static so it wasn't just a, a sheet of paper that showed you all the same nodes that would never change now the nodes would change from uh, map mm -hmm. to map campaign to campaign you yeah. could never fully prep like in the previous version you could come up with a, a best route a best group to take down a certain mission because it's not going to change with this you don't really have that option you have to constantly be thinking on your feet and and make your choices so i think they really did a, a good job revamping space infantry and the fact that they're going to be bringing that into the lock and load tactical and have you know space infantry lock and load tactical is just awesome oh that's I, awesome. yeah I've played Escape from Hades, but it's not been much. I've enjoyed the the little bit that I have played it, but mm -hmm. I haven't had a chance to to fully sit down and film it uh, just yet. But I did enjoy that game from Hollenspiel. Hollenspiel. <laughs> Kev? Yeah, I, I'm not a, you know, I like sci-fi. I'm not a huge sci-fi guy, but uh, I played the original uh, Space Infantry, and I actually really liked it as it was. Mm -hmm. I found it to be highly thematic and generate a lot of narrative. I wrote a lot about it and just story-wise, you know, I just mm -hmm. really captured my imagination. I don't have resurgence, so I'm now I'm very curious about it, given that it's got the uh, dynamic mapping stuff going on, so that's pretty cool. And Escape from Hades, I is, is that Lutman? Is that he, he, Manzo, Fred Manzo. Manzo, yeah, that's, that's yeah, Lutman, yeah, Lutman that's developed it. Yeah, I, I, I'd be curious about that. And Dune, I was scheduled to play it at a con, and they said, oh, it's six hours. I went, ah, goodbye. So, um, <laughs> and just so you know, Devin says that it is not a worker placement game. It is uh, moving armies, and it is definitely a war game. So there you go. Uh, okay. it is I must be thinking of a different game. Maybe there was a different version of the Doom game. Mm -hmm. I could have swore I saw one that was based on a Rondell, and it was more worker placement and influence definitely more of a euro but i could be thinking of a different game yeah. so i'll have to to look into that one well like i said i can't comment on dune i can say that escape from Hades is a really fun game it's a really neat game uh red alert space fleet it's the borg system so if you know if you like it you're gonna like it if you don't you're not going to uh space infantry resurgence i'm um, like you kev i don't have resurgence i have the original I had the original. I, I don't have it anymore, but I had the original, really enjoyed it, and it created a really cool narrative. I liked the idea that they went with dice rolling, but also still incorporated the counters. So you could do a chip draw uh, for you know your resolution. I thought that was pretty neat. Time of Legends, Joan of Arc, I don't think any of us know anything about, so we can, you know, can't comment on that. But the next is the Computer Gaming Awards, Best Pre-20th Century Era Computer Game. Blocks Julius Caesar is the winner. Blocks Richard III was up. Uh, Fields of Glory, Empires, and Fort Sumter, the Secession Crisis is the uh, the ones in that category. Blocks Julius Caesar is the one that won it. Nate? I uh, don't really have anything to add. The only one that I know anything about is uh, Fields of Glory, Empires, just because yeah. it was on Steam, and I've eyeballed it a few times, but uh, mm -hmm. never got it because I think the Total War series is better. 
and that's what I spend my time playing if I'm <laughs> doing a war game. All about the Total War Warhammer 2 Vampire Counts, baby. Look at you. That's awesome. Yeah, zero comment. Uh, don't, don't play any of those games. Well, Fort Sumter, I played the board game. I played the computer game. I think the computer game is fantastic. Play Deck did another knockout job with that one. In next year, I think Labyrinth will be up there for the award on that. Um, no. They've done a great job with all their, their stuff they've worked on so far. Uh, next one is Best Modern Era Computer War Game, and that is uh, Command Modern Operations. That is the winner. Unity of Command 2, Warplan, and World of Tanks. And Why is like World of the, Tanks on there? It got nominated. That, People voted it. it it's been on. It's been out for friggin' ten Forever. years now. Yeah, I mean, at least it, hell, I think it was out when I was still in college, <laughs> or before I joined the Marines. It, it was out back ago. when I was smoking pot. I know that, and that was twenty years ago. <laughs> so it, it, it's been a while. This is family so, friendly. Uh, oh, shit, <laughs> that's on I will say. Command way. Modern Operations. Uh, I would definitely agree with that one getting the win because mm-hmm. they they did a, a good beast. job of it. It is a beast. Yep. I would almost say it's more simulation than than war yeah. game. It, it's that in depth. But if you're wanting to to have something that's really deep like that, then Command's a good game. I mean, cool. you'll love it. The overhead's huge on that. I, I think I bought one of those games. Mm-hmm. And I loaded it up and I went, oh, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the time anymore for this. <laughs> cool. Like, I can play yeah. that thing. But yeah. once you work out, like, you save it before you do the combats, and you go, oh, okay, that's what the AI does. Then you go yeah. Back. Dirty that's exactly how you do it. <laughs> you save scum in it. Yeah. Well, no, when you're learning, because most people, you know, learn computer games by loading it up and doing it. Yeah. And not reading the rule book until after. So you go, all right, let's see how combat works. All right, I got three to one odds. Oh, that doesn't work the way I thought it did. Okay, so that's what the computer does. Yeah. Like what is that? Yes, right. What is the name of that game? Um, the the War in the Pacific. Mm-hmm. Right. I actually got that for PC now. They had a sale going and I got it for like fifteen bucks. Nice. Right. Yeah. You know, good sale on it. I was like, Yeah, I, I gotta get it just to just have it in the collection, but I fired it up once and the screen's there and I, I get there and I have like no idea what's going on. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll learn this later. Yeah. But, hit exit. Yeah. <laughs> Go it's about my day. Detail, right. Super detail. You're, oh you're my God. Yeah. What ships and how much oil goes in each merchant ship, all crazy stuff. I, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm talking in my ass, but uh, Anyway, no, so you're right. I mean, it's as in depth as you can get in a, a yeah. PC war game having to do with the Pacific. Yeah, but it's one of those that you want to play, but you don't want to take the time to learn how to play it. Yeah, I, I, I've learned after buying about oh, I don't know, four thousand PC games and playing six or seven Three. of them that <laughs> I need to stop. And I just I go look at the style and go, okay, Kevin, walk away. It's only three ninety nine <laughs> though. It'll never be three ninety nine ever again. Yeah. <laughs> All those little the GOG, I don't know even know what that stands for. Uh-huh. Good old games like, or grand old games or whatever, yeah. Right. The pack, the packs of like get all the strategy games ever for seventy nine ninety nine. <gasps> oh, I gotta have it. Yeah. That's look at the deal. deal. I've never played them. Uh, it's like every time you look at the screen like that, all you're seeing is three D words coming out going value, value, value. <laughs> you know, you're going I, I, I did the that. same thing. I know. It, it was like yeah. Panzer Core Gold, I think they had on right. sale recently on Steam. I got the 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 huge bundle of it. It was something like fifteen or twenty bucks. I forget what it was. You know, for all of them. And I'm probably never going to have the time to actually sit down and really dedicate to it. But I love seeing it on my my desktop, knowing that it's there and I can click on it. By the way, Todd says he likes your background, Kev. And Devin was saying that Dune is a combination of diplomacy and area control, better with more people. So right. then we move on to the next, which is the best sci-fi or fantasy computer war game, Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2, Fantasy General 2's and Stellaris, which was the winner. I don't think we have any comments on that, do we? Again, how did Stellaris win when that's been out for a while? Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2 should have won that if we're talking about time frame. Mm-hmm. If we're not, Stellaris is the better game, better war game by far. But I just don't think Stellar should have been included because it hasn't 
it's been out for a long time now. I mean, it's got something like 15, 20 expansions for the damn thing. Mm. But Battlefleet Gothic Armada too. They did a very good job. My brother and I played that a lot. Uh, we would set it up and do uh, two players versus the AI. And we just had fun spanking the, the AI together, playing as Tau and Necrons. We love the Warhammer mm-hmm. universe. So we'll, we'll play that stuff nice. all the time. And they did a, mm-hmm. they did a real good job, I gotta say with Armada too. I know most people in the, the comments or in the, section are not worried about this type of game but it is good if you like those so todd says gimpy the game you're thinking of is terraforming more as round map workers and resources so what, the next one is uh no for the one that you were talking yeah instead of dune it is uh terraforming mars is what is what todd is thinking that you're thinking of so best computer war game graphics steel division 2 u-boat board game Unity of Command 2 and World of Tanks. Unity of Command 2 won for best computer war game graphics. What, you, what, you both didn't win? What? No, that won best map. Oh. <laughs> we'll get to that okay. later. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but... It, 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 you know, it was fully deserving. <laughs> this... I, why did they pick Unity of Command for graphics? It didn't really have... I mean, it's it's Hex Encounter type it's stuff. The voters voted. But still, division blew out the graphics. Yeah, you can zoom yeah. all the way in. You can yeah. see the tank. You can see the shells bouncing off or it getting destroyed, and the smoke and fire burning out. <laughs> the awesome, infantry man. running through. Yeah, I mean, uh, still, division is is excellent. I mean, it's a mu- much more a Holy multiplayer crap. than a solitaire hold on, game. Hold on, hold on, Devin. What? Get a life. He has he, nine, he has nineteen hundred hours played in still hours. <laughs> That holy game can eat your life. Crap. Holy crap. It, it's done that with Devin. It's like, damn, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's deep. What, Kev? No, I'm stunned. I, I, I That's a lot. Yeah. That's a year. Yeah. That, that is, is a lot. Of there. Like, that's yeah. a lot of time. Who, who does that? How do you, what? How can you do that? I wish I had the time to be able to do that. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I'm on a computer that long, but I'm not on the computer to do that. <laughs> Come on. Th- how many people have that many hours into WoW or something like that? Come on. No. True. True. There are there are not many that. games yeah. that can suck you in to that level. Still, Aris is one. So see. there's there's no fault in him for it. So the next one is best amateur print and play war game: Battles for the Pacific, B25, Prince of the Skies, and Federation Stellar or Stellar Force. Yeah, I actually printed that out the other day. I have and not played both. it yet. No, it's not on there because it's not amateur print and play. <laughs> but Wait, Federation Stellar Force looks pretty interesting. Well, no, we did the Unity Command. We were talking about that. No, no, no. The couple in that category, S Boat, Scourge of the English Channel, and Storm over Dublin are both in that category. Oh, that's right. That's now. right. Yeah, yeah. Storm over Dublin. You're right. Um, that wasn't on the list until I scrolled down further. So, like I said, Federation Stellar Force, that is the winner, and everybody has talked very good about it. So, uh, I'm really yeah. looking forward to trying that one out. DVG should probably pick it up then. Yeah, really. Yeah. No other comments, so we'll move to the next one. I hate print and play. Sorry, I, I'm not print and play guy. No, I know, I know. That's often, I I, I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> I figured we didn't have a lot of people that would talk about print and plays. There's um, a reason I pay money for someone else to print it <laughs> so I can play it. I'm with you right there, bro. Best solitaire cooperative board war game. Fields of Fire 2. Jeff Davis, the Confederacy at War. Peloponnesian War. You boat the board game. Which one? Zeppelin Raider. So... <laughs> um. I will start off by saying something that you already covered earlier. Uh, U-Boat the board game. I mean, I have it. I backed it on Kickstarter because the U-Boat theme uh, really re- resounds with me. I love subs. You yep. can't play this game solitaire. I mean, you can, but it's just... It's, you have it, to make certain exceptions and change yes. certain settings for yeah, it to it's work just well. It's cooperative, so one, the bad category. Yeah, right? yeah. And but from a solitaire standpoint, you really can't play it without making a lot of changes and doing a lot of work. And it just doesn't it, it doesn't seem like it be because when I looked at it, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna play this. And I started looking, I'm like, the rule book's a mess. And no, 
No, um, no, <laughs> goes back on the <laughs> shelf. <laughs> it can't be a mess. Well, hang on a second, the rule book can't be a mess. It was all game of the well, year, solid. and according to Mr. Buchanan, <laughs> we, we need to accept that rule books are a mess and it's all okay. Just, just but from a solitaire out. standpoint, I was just like, well, yeah, no, I'll save it for whenever we can play in a group. And unfortunately, things have not allowed people to play in groups this year, so it's just sat on the shelf. Uh, so yeah, for, from a cooperative standpoint, yeah, it could be up there for it. Um, but it's, I, I think yeah. solitaire and cooperative should be split off in my opinion, because all of these other ones are solitaire yeah. games. And if yeah. you're throwing in a cooperative game that could throw it off, just like it was all cooperative and one solo, it's hard to, to weigh them against each other. I think. Yeah. I just, when I'm looking at these categories, right. And I'm looking at this solitaire and then the, all the ones that are listed down. There are three that easily beat out U-Boat, Fields of Fire 2, Peloponnesian War, and Zeppelin Raider all beat U-Boat when it comes to solitaire play. Yeah. Now, I can fault them on a few things. Like Fields of Fire 2, I think GMT was not honest when they uh, announced the or put on the, the box the complexity rating. I think they gave the, the game a complexity of five. It was five mm. or six. And the game is much more complex than that. Kind of we all know it is. Uh, I actually compared it because I pulled out um, the, was it Age of Sail or whatever is one of the, the sailing games, which is much, much easier. 20 page roll book, book versus 60 page roll book. And both of them were rated at the same complexity level. Like the you you're not being honest. So that was something that I knocked on Fields of Fire. But Fields of Fire, I do believe, is a an excellent game that does a good job of showing uh, communication and how it works in a combat scenario with a company level and how you're going to pass the orders down from the top and and work them on down. So Fields of Fire should be, you know, roted up for that. Peloponnesian War, we also already talked about earlier about its solitaire aspects. Mm -hmm. And then with Zeppelin Raider, Zeppelin Raider is kind of like that feel good, right? The the feel good food. It's your burger and fries. It's just it's like a comfort game. Yeah, the hunters, the hunted. Um, I'm for uh, brain farting out the, the one that's in the Pacific. Beneath the med, you know, the. Yeah, beneath the med. Victory. Yeah. All oh, Silent Victory. That's the one I was thinking of. All of those type of games. It doesn't matter which one, whatever you're into. If it's boats, planes, zeppelins, bombers, whatever. Zeppelin Raiders, just one that does it for zeppelins, right? Sure. Much so, better solitaire game than U Boat, by far. Yeah. It's a tried and tested true system. It works. Go ahead, Mo. No, the, the other thing, too, is if it's going to be up for a solitaire, I mean, well, it's solitaire cooperative, so it's a combination of the two. The other thing, too, is with any of these games, you've got to, you know, they've got to also yet take into account how are you going to play them? You know, are you going to, you know, how often are you going to play them? U-Boat is a big game to set up, and it really does need to be set up with, with people, you know, meant right. to be played with people. So it really is meant to be just a cooperative game. But the other ones are all solo games and Greg Smith does an amazing job with all his games. He creates he has these games that create really interesting narratives. Uh Fields of Fire 2, it's complex, lots of layers to it. Uh, Todd was commenting over here. He says it's super complicated. So I've heard. Oh wait, Gimpy got it. So apparently it's not as complex as as <laughs> as it's meant out to be. Oh <laughs> the hell is everybody gunning for Gimpy this evening, man? <laughs> I wow. feel like a dog that keeps getting kicked. <laughs> yeah, to loosen up the, the rope on his little robe there. He's, he's cutting the circulation off. Of oh. I think me. we're all frustrated because we can't be on YouTube tonight. It's just one of those things. Yeah, but, I, reckon, yeah I, wish we, I wish we were on YouTube. This would have been fun. It would have been a lot better, yeah. Uh, can you have I, any comments I, on those? Yeah, look, if I was going to weigh in on this, uh, feel, for me, Fields of Fire would probably be the winner just because it is so rich and deep. However, it is complex, and I have not played. I've only looked at it and read the rules and watched it. Watched it played uh, again. One, one of those things, and Zeppelin Raider would be a close second. So, yeah. uh, and Trevor it. just is in here. He says, "Mo and Nate, thank you for your service, Chance, and your war game content too." Kev, you're cool too. <laughs> <laughs> so now, a little digging, Kev. Yeah, of course. Why not? <laughs> Get in line. Yeah. So the next one is for best magazine board war game. 
Campaigns of 1777 from Strategy and Tactics. Uh, that is the winner. Then you had Die Atom Bomb from Against the Odds, uh, Greatest Asia Code Prosperity Fear from uh, Spear from Operations, and Pitts War from Paper Wars, and the Waterloo Campaign W or 1815 from C3I. Um, the winner, as I said, is Campaign 1777, which was Harold Buchanan's design, who was in the chat uh, earlier uh, making comments about, uh, you know, our, our, our comments about U Boat. Uh, uh, so, which game was his? Pitch War? Uh, campaign 1777 ah, okay and it won nice. and i think uh me personally uh, i've said it before i'll say it again i think it's one of the most well-developed magazine games there is when you get that game it is a solid game um magazine war games have a real earned you know reputation for being underdeveloped yeah uh so but i and i have a real weak spot for war games i, I mean uh, for magazine war games i just love them but Campaign 1777 is a really solid game, and uh, Harold did an amazing job on it. And if you've not gotten it yet, I would definitely strongly recommend picking it up. Beautiful map. Yeah, gorgeous map. Gorgeous map. Yeah. Same for Great East Asia Code Prosperity Sphere. That, that's another interesting game. And, of I course, Waterloo that, Campaign. I was not as big a fan of that. <clears throat> I played that. I didn't particularly like it very much. Um, I, of all these, I, I I need to go order campaigns of 70, 1777, but uh, Waterloo campaign 1815, man, what mm -hmm. fantastic, great artwork, great production values, clean, crisp rule, good quality components, and amazing gameplay. So I, I struggled to see how anyone could uh, could top that, um, but I'm happy to try this campaign of 1777. What's cool? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go order it right now while we're talking. Well, and then, while we're talking about uh, Max. Todd wanted to make, before you say anything, Nate, Todd wanted to say, whoa, that's not what I meant. I meant he got the complexity. <laughs> so. Back, back to Todd, he says, that. it's a pretty standard issue for me to stick my foot in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's no worries, man. Yeah. Now, as far as uh, magazine board war games are concerned, I don't do a whole lot of those but i will say something that i got into recently was the war diary magazines and i like how they're trying something different with instead of the small single map one little thing of counters magazine war game that with your subscription you can pick out a box game right, so i yeah. think that that's a cool direction that they're going in just putting it out there for people to know so war diary something new they cover the same type of stuff that you used to in other war uh, magazines. That's coming up, you know, war, Yeah, but the subscription costs about as much as a single issue of these other games or these other magazines. <laughs> and actually, yeah, what? Yeah, it's for a year, so you get three issues and a box game. That right. it's yeah. good value for what you're paying. So I gotta say that that's where I'm. My boat would go. So Nate can not only get the complexity of Fields of Fire two, but he can do math. Yes. Look, I mean, there's no end. To the, look, people underestimate him because he's a crayon eater. Don't <laughs> do that. Look, when they see me trying to film um, under an iron sky, they're they're definitely going to underestimate me because that's <laughs> going to be bad. No, no, I think you're going to do a great job on it. And then we have the best postcard small format war game, uh -huh. Heart Pounding Fight, the Battle for La High Sand, uh, Five for Fighting, the Battles of D-Day. That sounds more like a hockey game. Imwa, the unification of Hawaii, 1795. That was the winner. Uh, JU87, Stuka Jericho Trumpets, and SWAT Hostage Rescue, which really sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. But Imwa, unification of Hawaii, is the one that won it. I have not played any of these, so I can't comment on any of them. Anybody have any comments about these? Thanks, the only right. thing is, every time I see the word Stuka, all I think is Stuka Joe. Stuka Joe. Stuka Joe right? He's, he owns that word now. <laughs> I didn't so, realize he had his own game, and I was like, oh, wait, that doesn't say Stuka Joe. It so we'll Stuka rename Jericho. that JU87 Stuka Joe Trumpets. <laughs> yep. That would be a better name. Stuka Joe's Jericho Trumpets. Um, and then we have Best Expansion or Supplement for an Existing World War Game, Great War Commander, British Expeditionary Force, Next War Supplement 2, Insurgency, Red Factories, Time of Crisis, Age of Iron and Rust, which is the winner, and Wing Leader Eagles, 1943 to 45. And that's another stacked category right there with some great expansions. Yeah. yeah. 
Wow. Nate? Uh, next war supplement. I mean, that's an easy call. Mm -hmm. And Time of Crisis, I played some of the first, but I haven't got to do the expansion, but I heard the expansion added a lot to the game. Solitaire. So, and, yeah. Yeah. It, it really opened up the gameplay a lot for that. So I see Time of Crisis winning as a, a perfectly fine choice there. Yeah. Kev? Yeah, I'd probably lean towards Great War Commander for the expansion and then uh, Next War Supplement number two. That said, the Insurgency game is a whole new thing. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a completely different game and game style, game play style. So it uh, kind of threw me for a loop. So I, I, I wouldn't put my hand up and go, oh, you need to like vote that <laughs> number one, right? Uh, but I think it's very interesting. I like how it extends the existing game because now you're dealing with, okay, the war is theoretically fought. Now right. you got to go back and deal with the counterinsurgency. Yeah, right. Exactly. Which is pretty cool. You know, Mitch did yeah. a Mitch did an amazing job with that series, and that is yeah. just a an, yeah. a really fantastic series. Yeah, it's, it's like a it's like a grown up coin, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It's more like the it's more it's more action. Um, yeah, it's you're down on the ground at yeah. that level. Um, these I played Time of Crisis once. wasn't crazy for it. It just wasn't for me. Uh, Red factories. Uh, that's just those. The, that's the gift that keeps on giving. Is that all those supplements? Uh, Wing leader. I've heard a lot of great things about. It. I've never played it. Uh, Next war supplement two insurgency. We'd get my vote, of course. Next war. I just love that series. Um, great war commander. British expeditionary force. I know a lot of people uh, speak very highly of it and mm -hmm. speak very highly of great war commander because it's the derivative of uh, combat commander. Um, yeah. That's one. I'm. That's another one. I'm not really. That wasn't for me. I played it, kind of liked it at first, but then it just, it was, it's just, you know, just not for me. So um, I move on from that, you know, I moved on from that game. Um, but I know, and I appreciate and respect the, the fact that it's got a lot of popularity with war gamers and I can see why. Um, <laughs> like I said, it's just not, just not for me. Then we have the best war game playing components, crossing the line, Aachen 1944. Nevsky, Two Towns of Roost and Collision, 1240 to 1242. U-Boat, the board game, Wings of the Motherland, and World of War 85, Storm in the Gap. So, and U-Boat won. U-Boat really? is the winner. Yeah. Now, this, this I will say, that if we count U-Boat as a war game and allow it in this one, then I think it's perfectly fine for it to win on components because the big 3D submarine is awesome. The... 3D printed, or not 3D printed, but the, the resin, resin components yeah. that you could get to, to add it up, to spruce it up, are excellent. I mm -hmm. like the uh, the neoprene mat that kept track of everything nice and neat for you. All the, the rest of the standard components, like the cardboard pieces, were nice and thick. The, I loved how it had the, the was it, what do you call this thing, like protractor? And sure, yeah. The, uh, yeah, the circular ruler, thingy. the protractor, yeah, yeah. They're yeah, not where you actually... Maybe. Compass. You know what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah. The mathy crap that you had to actually figure yeah. out what direction you were going in. Those were neat additions, something awesome to see actually in a war game. So when it comes to components, I think it's fine for U-Boat to, to win on that one. If it wasn't U-Boat and we're looking at the rest of them, I would go World War 85 because there was just so much there. I mean, yeah. just mm -hmm. so much in the box. Yep. Um well, Jeff's going to try to figure out a reason so you boat doesn't qualify. Uh no, no, no. I mean, look, it's uh, everything it's uh, nominated for. I think it's one, so you know, stack the deck, right? Um, way to buy, way to buy the election. So uh, I, I think crossing the line, Arkin, uh had a great map and great components. It was thoughtfully put together. Mm -hmm. I think the Nevesky uh, game that I saw, the, the module, the version of it that I saw, mm -hmm. beautiful. And mm -hmm. World War 85 has done a great job of taking World of War, restructuring it and using color and a numeral color. And I know, I know maps is a separate, separate category, but the, the map artwork and the rules layouts and the charts and the or color, co color coding the rules mm -hmm. was the probably one of the single best rule book 
formatting exercises I've ever seen. Uh, in terms yeah. of larger font, great, great examples everywhere. Clear design and notes inserted everywhere. I thought it was a, a the new standard for rule book design and layout. Uh, so to say that someone had a clipped together cardboard boat with some little plastic guys was better really sort of stick as I swallow one of the pieces down here. So, uh, you know, your mileage may vary. <laughs> well, I mean, I, that's where it comes down to, uh, you know, what, like you said, your mileage may vary and everyone has um, a different feel on value. I think uh, in this instance, I would lean towards you both the board game because the components I thought were really good. Although the other ones were, I had not seen Aachen, but I've seen the others. And uh, I thought if, if it wasn't them, I would go with World of War 85 just because of all the things you outlined right. with right. the color coding and the upgrades that were done and how everything is just more <clears throat> seamless and uh, very integrated, you know, so you can learn everything a lot easier and, and understand it during the game a lot easier. Then we get to the best board wording map graphics. Uh, Death Valley battles for the Shenandoah, uh, the Shenandoah, which has a beautiful map. Nevsky, Teutons, and Rus and Collision, which we've already talked about as well, has a beautiful map, captures a period real well. Stalingrad, uh, Stalingrad 42, another beautifully done map. Last 100 yards, solid map, and I love that it's topographical map. And I think it looks really fantastic, and it, it sucks you into the tactical aspect of the game. Yep. U-Boat, the board game. Won the game, won that award, and doesn't even have a map. So that that one, that one is again goes back to where there needs to be oversight, where you could say, hey, wait a minute, this is not in this category. It doesn't belong here. So I'll we'll take it out of there. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. What map? Go ahead. Go ahead, Nick. Go ahead. Whatever. No, no, I I was interrupting you, Kev. Go ahead. No, I have nothing to say because it's it's f bomb ridiculous, right? It's full stop. <laughs> no, no further comment. I'm done. <laughs> uh yeah ditto kev man and and i've been the one that's defending you both this whole time but this this is a garbage vote and i think it's right that a lot of people were just voting for you boat because they put out there hey you know vote for a game which is fine yeah. they should want their game to be supported i i have no problem with that the problem comes with who put this game in this category right because yeah. yeah. it never should have been there there's no freaking map now yeah. there's technically one on the app, but that doesn't count. I'm sorry, it doesn't. No. Yeah, and it was it's, up for computer graphics, so I mean, under that yeah, um, right. category, right. I could see possibly, but not under map. And that one, that again goes back to what I said. There needs to be some sort of oversight to correct things like that and say, hey, you know, this is just getting lumped in here and it doesn't belong here, so let's take it out. And the reason why it even won, like it did in all these, is because phalanx went out there on their kickstarter page and because i know i got the alert because i'm a backer saying hey vote for us in all these categories which is fine i mean if a publisher wants to you know ask for votes go for it but this is why there needs to be oversight because otherwise then it becomes a popularity contest only and not quality contest and not there's not like real debate or real thought about a game that that should be in that category and should win. And that's where I feel it, you know, the awards, it, hopefully it's a little bit of growing pains. They can learn from that and uh, next year have some sort of oversight. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a, a company campaigning for themselves. That's fine. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, more power to you. Uh, but, but, it, but is popular vote, vote even the way to do this? I mean, that, so. No, I think oversight, and I, 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 it would be nice to have a panel, but you also want to have the, um, the, the gamers involved. You know, I think you have to either, if you're going to go with a popular vote, that's fine, but there needs, again, needs to be oversight to catch things like that and say that doesn't belong here. Yeah, I don't think the only other. Go ahead. Sorry, maybe go ahead. Uh, the only other way they could do it would be to have many more games listed down and have that as the popular vote. Like you can vote for three, four, or five, whatever in each category, and then when it's narrowed down to there, right. then you have a, a select panel that picks mm -hmm. from those. That that could be done, you know, something yeah. along those lines. But just doing it this way, some publishers are going to have a bigger reach than other publishers, and you could end up with stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, did, who else got an email from? a designer or a publisher that said, hey, would you please vote for my game, right? Because no one else has taken this that 
Okay, you go. Who? 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 who oh, I meant I got one from you both. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, but I mean, yeah. I, I didn't get any emails from anybody about any of the games I bought. And no. I bought most of these games. Yeah. So no one else is like, oh, vote for me. I'm the prettiest. You know, look at me. I'm the prom queen. I, I mean, it, it, so I think the system is a little bit catawonka. Catawonkus, is that what you say? That's one of those American things. Catawampus? <laughs> yeah, that thing. So I don't know. I just, anyway, whatever. Next. And Todd says, Kev Sharp, how would you compare Death Valley to LOB as far as complexity? Or is that not even a fair comparison? That's not. Well, so that's a, they're the only two really big uh, and new um, American Civil War systems. <clears throat> I have not played LOB, but I've watched it played. And I think LOB probably plays actually faster and cleaner than what I'm seeing out of the great battles of, of the american civil war but i'm not very familiar with great battles of the american civil war yet was our first scenario so yeah. i i think they're both very very interesting and very good and i would play both of them but uh i'm not a super acw guy so i, I just i'm, I'm curious I, i'm tactically curious you know <laughs> about <ACW. laughs> i'm tactically curious yeah. uh <laughs> then we have Best board war game rules. Peloponnesian War, Stalingrad 42, you both the board game. That one, Undaunted Normandy, Wings Over the Motherland. And Nate? Okay, I was going to say, because I'm going to jump in here on this. I know yeah. you're, uh, you're, you're like chomping at the bit. Yeah, uh, flat out. This this is a, a joke, because when I talked about you both earlier, one of the things I was mentioning was the rules were butchered at the start. They had to do a couple of rewrites, some erratas, and mm -hmm. it was almost like the the users, the game owners, when they got them, kind of play tested it, and that's when they realized there was a problem with the amount of orders and kind of jerry rigged some house rules to to fix that. There is no way they had mm -hmm. the best rules. Now, were the rules usable and functional after all those steps? Yeah, but they weren't usable and great right out of the box. You know, as soon as you're holding that uh, pamphlet in your hand. And then you compare that to the others on this list, and then I'm looking at Undaunted Normandy. Excellent rule book. Very well written by a great designer who crossed that bridge very well in a, uh, a war game that can bring in people who are not necessarily into war games. Right? right? And it's so well written that it's it's not hard to understand, even if you're not a war gamer. And to have you both beat out Undaunted Normandy is just a flat-out joke. Right. And I'm not saying that the other games on the list are bad, but the amount of errata and jargon that came for U Boat versus the amount of praise that was given to you to uh, Undaunted Normandy, it, it's not even a comparison. It's a joke that Undaunted Normandy did not win that category, hands down. <laughs> Done. Okay. Wow. Um, so I th I'm excited that Undaunted Normandy was nominated, right? It, it's one of those classic crossover games. Mm -hmm. I'm disappointed it didn't win any anything yeah. this year. I, I mean, it's kind of amazing that it, that it didn't, uh, you know, because it's, it, it's got all the great elements of a Euro game with a war theme. And yep. it's canonically, there's combat and stuff like that, and it's got a lot more for it. So I'm super disappointed that it didn't win anything. I would have thought this would be the category it would win in. Uh, but if it wasn't going to be undaunted, it act and I can't speak to you both because I haven't played, I haven't read the rule book. But 42, uh, pretty crisp, right? Pretty yeah. tight. Uh, there is some errata out for it, but fantastic layout, great paper for the rules. You know, it's, it's got that DMT has got rid of that shiny paper business. Mm -hmm. So um, I love that rule book and the Peloponnesian War rule book is, is awesome. Another one, yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, okay. So it is what it is, right? Yeah, I think I echo you guys pretty much. Wings Over the Motherland, I'm not familiar with that one, but mm -hmm. Undaunted. Uh, solid rules i mean solid game great crossover game fantastic crossover game actually you know yep. david thompson just keeps knocking it out of the park the guy mm -hmm. he's just 
rolling on all cylinders right now and yeah. let's just hope he doesn't get derailed ever because he's doing a, an amazing job uh you boat the rules are a mess right out of the box and they've sat there ever since uh eventually whenever i can get a group together i'll probably print out the new ones and, and go from there stalingrad 42 and peloponnesian were both are really crisp rules you know as you were saying really clean uh easy to understand solid rules and uh mark has both marks have their yeah. you know their systems down pat you know as far as their their design and their writing systems right. for simonich it's that zakman for for the the 40 series is just you know clean solid just a right. really good series to jump into and great um, examples of play right yes yes very very uh easy to understand because we we opened it up literally at sd hist last year uh me tom and and uh Nick and we just kind of punched it. We punched Nick's copy and we were just separating it out and we started playing. We were like, okay, let's read the rules while we're playing. <laughs> and that's right, what we right. did. Right. And it was just easy to pick up and we had a good time with it. And that's in between socializing, drinking, and everything else. Um, best computer assist module is an X1 and you both the board game won that. It was also, or you, you both the board game won that. It was the only board game in that category and, it, and it's fitting. Uh, so we jumped to best original box cart uh, box cover art, which is Nevsky, Peloponnesian War, Stalingrad 42, you both the board game, and Wings of the Motherland. Seems like there's a lot of repeats here for these. Yeah. And you both won it. You both yeah. won it. Yeah. I would say that in this, personally, you both is definitely a strong contender, but me personally, I love the Peloponnesian War cover. Yeah. I was going to say the same. Yep. I would agree. I think Stalingrad 42 cover is uh, pretty generic. Yeah. So it's a surprising. And then we have publication awards, best professional war game magazine against the odds, Battles Magazine. Uh, C3I won it. Uh, Modern War and Strategy and Tactics. C3I is the, that's the one, that is the pinnacle in my opinion, by any, yeah. by any stretch. Battles, they tend to have the best components. Yeah, Battles yeah. is a pretty good magazine though. When it comes out, well, <laughs> that's yeah. the problem. Uh, you know, look at despite all the you know social justice warrior nonsense that you know went on in the last issue, it it uh, it's a really good magazine that gives alternative views on things, and I think yeah. that's pretty cool. C three I, you know, it's a that's really a house magazine, although it's trying to be less a house magazine. Yeah. So I, I I'm cool with that. I think the modern warfare, what modern war. And F and T are just getting long in the tooth to me. Yeah. So Todd wanted to know, in the magazines, how come U boat didn't win? <laughs> <laughs> I would have laughed my ass off if they did. Damn. Oh, that's hilarious. If they were nominated, they would have won. They would have got the votes, probably. Uh, exactly. Yeah. We should do that next year. No one for something like that. Uh, Nate, any other comments? Uh, no, nah, I mean, I'm not surprised that C3I won it. I mean, hell, even when I first got into the hobby, the first war game magazine I ever heard about was C3I. Yeah, right. I mean, everyone knows about it. The yeah. next one would be Strategy and Tactics. Sure. And uh, Best Amateur Magazine, Bonsai Dispatches from the Bunker, Line of Departure, and War Diary, which I think we're all going to mm -hmm. universally agree was yeah, no, definitely nice. deserving of the win. Yeah. Yeah. I like... War Diary did good. It covers multiple topics. It covers multiple game publishers. The fact that you get a box game, it's cost effective. I mean, they're they're pretty well hitting it across the board. Yeah, yeah. And, and they they built that magazine over the last two or three years up from a straight black and white publication to be in full color and fant fantastic articles and very very well formatted and pr pr produced. You know how you can tell if the magazine is is reached its pinnacle, its good point or not, if you're not embarrassed to have it sitting on the back of your toilet in the guest room as reading material, and that's where I keep my war diaries. I hadn't thought about that. It, that's my reading material because if someone comes over to your house, right, you don't want to have like something crappy sitting there for them to read. So you got to have something. So you hide like, your Vogue magazines and everything else and put the war diary on top. Yeah, war diary <laughs> sitting right up there in front for them, just in case they get a little bored. That's Pull out great. the magazine, read some history. 
And we had uh, only one uh, thing here in the, the next category. Best historical scenario article was 1777 year decision by Trevor Bender, which was a fantastic article. And that is in the strategy and tactics 316, which has campaigns of 1777 from Harold Buchanan. And that was a great companion article. Wonderful. Then we had uh, evolution of historical small unit tactic board war games by Robert Carroll. He won that for, what was that? The analysis, I think, was. I don't have that category here for whatever reason. It's not showing. Then we go to the best game review or analysis. Uh, armchair General, Harsh Rules, Breaking Down Board Games, Player's Aid, and uh, Wojnik, or is it Wonik or Wojnik? Wojnik? I, I always screw that name up. Uh, TV. And uh, Player's Aid won that one. And I think we are all familiar with all those guys, even though I butcher the last name, <laughs> the, the, the last guy's name. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Players Aid, you know, more power to them. They did a great job. They always do a great job. They have a ton of content out, and uh, they always have something going. So yeah. it's uh, great to see them get yeah. the accolades here. And uh, but, I don't. How do you get on that category? Because, and I'm not talking about, you know, ourselves here, but I would have, you know, obviously self-preservation i'd like to see myself on there but there are other bigger channels uh like rob or marco neither of them are on theirs potentials isn't, well isn't marco written, isn't it a written written or is it video no it just says uh, best game review or analysis which is kind of a little uh, it's, Fake. I think it's a misnomer because it should be reviewer or analyst or something like that. Because best game review or analysis to me speaks to one specific review or one specific right. analysis right. piece. You know, whether it's video or audio yeah. or written. The that's what I'm saying. I think the title on that needs to be adjusted to reviewer or content creator or whatever versus best game review or analysis because that that kind of leads you to think one thing over another. And, and to you know to my to my mind. But, I just think uh, they're leaving out a lot of people from the categories or from well, this category rather. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's an evolving category. Uh, the marketplace is evolving. There are hundreds of bloggers now and yeah. all the guys that are involved in this, I think are, you know, they're all women make. So, uh, they probably are not aware of what all that's of what's going on in the digital realm. So, I can see why they would choose these guys, and and you know, Player Aid has a pretty deep relationship with GMT, so that makes sense. Well, plus they always they put a out a lot of, of stuff. Yeah. Articles. They put out a lot of content out. Yeah, no yeah. question about it. Yeah, no, they do a great job. And uh, harsh rules. That there's two of them. Yeah, <laughs> and harsh rules. He does a great job too. Ben Harsh with his rules breakdown is just really, mm -hmm. really solid with the way he combines the graphics and the and yeah. oh yeah video content. It's just really. Well done. Okay, so I watched a, a lot of his stuff. Yeah, that's a video channel. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then we have the best board war game of the year. The nominations are <laughs> Nevsky, Two Towns of Risk and Legend, uh, Stalingrad 42, U Boat the Board Game. Did not expect that. Uh, Undaunted, Undaunted Normandy, and Wings of the Mullah. And again, we have that that kind of that same uh, group of games in there. And U uh, Boat won it. And, um, no, yeah, <laughs> Damn. so Nate, uh, yeah, undaunted Normandy <laughs> should have blown that the hell out. Just, just done. I mean, we've, we've beaten this horse to death, Yeah, but yeah, there's I mean, plenty of, know. there's plenty of reasons that you boat should not have won. And again, it's not that it's not a good game in its own right. And that it, does new things and stuff that I like wholeheartedly. But if we're talking about best war game of the year, Undaunted Normandy would win that hands down with in, all the good stuff that he did with that. Yep. In this list of those uh, five games, which I struggle to see why there's not other titles. Yes. It's the same five games in every category, right? Which really is problematic. Uh, but... I, I I can't see how undaunted if it, if by any measure wouldn't be the winner in this in, in this uh, category. Yeah, or Nevsky, or Nevsky, because Nevsky also created a new system, 
and you know there was some innovation there you know whereas uh, stalingrad 42 nothing against it i love stalingrad 42 but it is a continuation of the existing 40 series which is a you know not a bad thing it's just that it, it's already an established product where nevsky is a whole new system and right. it's it did some new things interestingly mm -hmm. uh just like undaunted did and u-boat did with the way it presented its game so I would say of the three, I would lean towards Nevsky or on Undaunted Normandy easily over U-Boat. I think a, a closer race would be between something like World of War 85 and Undaunted Normandy. Those two would be ones that I would have a harder time picking which one's War yeah. Game of the Year. You know? Right. right. But when yeah. you've got this list, it's, it's hands down an easy pick on which one it should have been. Uh, you, but there are games that should have been on this list that just weren't on this list. So I think I think uh, Todd's got some comments over here. We're going to catch up on. I think he's um, uh, wanting to nominate us for next year because he says here is there a category for mediocre war game video channel? Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Todd. Who qualify for that, right? Uh, and then we've got. Um, he said, uh, asking for a friend, uh, harsh rules are superb. Definitely agree with them there. Harsh, uh, harsh rules are fantastic. Um, I find it interesting. And then he says here, he finds it interesting that undaunted suddenly popped up at the end of the show. So weird. It wasn't in some of the earlier categories. And Todd is then saying the mediocre war game channel would be his, not us. And I disagree <laughs> with that. Todd, you do a great job. Seriously. You're a great slouch. Yes, it's all about the robe. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We we've got to pay a little more attention next year. Maybe mm -hmm. toss some uh, some opinions that way. Make sure a wider selection of voices are being heard when it comes to the selection and the categories and which games are eligible for what categories. All that good stuff. I mean, yeah, that's why I was saying oversight. There needs to be more involvement with you know more people to make sure that you know these things don't happen. Yeah, which you know it's the first year back so there's gr there's always growing pains that's the way i look at it uh, or, or or you could say it's the first year back get it right first time Good. Could. <laughs> and then yeah. we have uh the james f dunnigan award for playability and design goes to volco runky and uh definitely uh very very well deserved for volco he does uh, an amazing job with everything he does, all these different, you know, systems he's come up with now with the, the campaign and levy system for Nevsky. He did the same with coin. Uh, he's just, he's and then labyrinth. He just comes up with these really cool ideas, puts them down mm -hmm. on paper and executes them flawlessly. So I, I, I have a question. So is that, is that award for overall all the things he's done last year, or is it for specifically for Nevesky, or is it some other metric? What's the? Metric? I'm not sure what the metric is. It just says that it's the award for playability and design. I don't know if that would be considered for 2019 or for overall. I would say it would be overall okay. because it would be hard to, you know, if you get. You know, me, you, or Gimpy comes up and we have, hey, we got an idea for a game. We just happen to hit on the right game. And then we get the James F. Dunnigan Award for being lucky one time and that all of our other games suck. That kind of, you know, waters that award down, whereas I think it, it's really given to somebody who's has a proven track record and is really innovated and, you know, pushed the design boundaries know further forward progressed it i think volco right. definitely wins that hands down well to to be fair we all know a game designer who's done that he's pushed everything forward and he's and published a lot of games year. in 2019 bunch of i mean you, you guys know i'm gonna say david thompson you know he could have easily won this uh this category he would have yeah. if his name were yeah. there i wouldn't be surprised not at all so I don't know all the games that uh, Herman Lutman has designed or when they were, were released, but he's another guy that would have been in the category for, you look at the, the gamut of mm -hmm. errors of us and the innovation he's bringing to the table in each of his game designs. It's, uh, he, he's a great designer as well. So I, you know, I'm sure he was on that list, no doubt, but as a candidate, but, uh, 
not taking anything away from Volco, uh, just curious about how how that was decided, whether it's like a lifetime achievement award or whether it's, you know, for last year or yesterday or uh, for not being involved when you vote. I don't know. I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do need to flesh that out a little bit because you're right. There's there's plenty of names that we could see there that none of us would be surprised to see that names. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yeah, exactly. And then the final award was for the Clausewitz Hall of Fame, and that was to Paul Banner, and he won that award. Kind of like you know we were talking about before with the uh, I think for like Volko with that lifetime uh, achievement. Uh, right. sort of thing that's what he wanted for as well so right. well, and then todd wants to know who you were saying herman lutman herman lutman and then he also said can you have a people's choice and a panel's choice you could but then what does the award go to is it the people's choice award or the panel's choice award i think when i say panel or oversight i mean oversight into making sure that games are in the proper categories and then maybe if they need to be broken down further so that way you're covering more things so that way you don't have a game like u-boat in with other war games where it's more of a strategy game and then it would fit more in that category then put it in there uh it's just and then again obviously the the obvious thing well should it be up for map graphics when it doesn't have a map no that's why you need oversight yeah or some of those games that were separated by hundreds, if not thousands of years and time periods yeah. that just should not be in the same damn category. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, there's other ways to look at it, too. I mean, we can look at it from a, mechan from a mechanics standpoint. <laughs> best CDG, best chip pool. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can look, find great games and give them recognition for being awesome yeah. versus just saying, uh, yeah, this, this epic of time, I'm going to say all of these the, the all these games fit in this category and then make you know literally hundreds of games fight against each other uh, that are totally disparate and have completely different systems and i don't know it just seemed odd to me uh, and i know that's how it used to be done and that's fine that's mm -hmm. that's tradition that's great but while but uh, it's funny that we're sitting here having people comment saying well, you need to accept that the, the marketplace and the games are changing and that the, the that our, our, our world is changing. But we're going to stick with these old categories and these old old, old metrics and these old things. So you, you, you can't have it both ways, right? Yeah. It, either we're innovating and doing different things and we're going to have the rule, the, the award reflect that, mm -hmm. or we're, we're going to have what is traditionally considered a war game and have it included. And if you're not, out you go. Yeah, I think you're on point with that. Best card driven, right. best chip pull, best you know whatever. That would be, break the games down into a, a much more cohesive group that yep. to, that could be voted on. Versus, here's ten thousand years of time period, right, right here. Yeah. Right. Which one fits? Yeah. So there's yeah. another there's another vlogger that's got some ideas about doing his own sort of awards deal mm. and. I, I would, uh, if you guys are interested, I'd get you in touch with them. Uh, there's two or three guys that are trying to plan out an awards for, you know, like kind of the, I guess the digital reviewers, game players, mm -hmm. awards for wargaming. Uh, I think that would be interesting to get involved in and have five or six of us talking about what's going on in the marketplace and what's of interest and all the rest of it uh, to give it an alternative viewpoint which is nice right sure. have a sec second viewpoint yeah no and we can actually talk about that next month because i was thinking next month we'll have like a christmas end of the year party maybe informal whiskey charlie awards or something like that mm -hmm. where we don't have like you know we don't have any seal to give anybody but we can just you know give our own opinion on what we think is our games of the year, things like that. Cause I am one that I avoid generally. I know a lot of people do it. It's, it's good filler to throw on your channel. And I've been tempted a couple times to do it, but then I always pull myself back to do top five, top tens. I know everybody loves hearing it and stuff like that. Seeing them. My taste changed yeah. so much. I feel, but and those are useful. Change. They are useful, but games are coming out. There's so many games coming out. Cause what I like now, the, my top five now in six months, a year, they're going to be totally different. You know, so how valid is my top five now if 
those top five or not. If I'm saying these are the top five games, and then six months later, I'm, I don't, none of them are in that top five list. You know, right, right. That's why I kind of hold off on ever doing any of those. We but, could call it the uh, Gimpany, uh, Gimpy and Company Game Awards. Gimpany, <laughs> Gimpany, yeah. Gump and Gimpany. <laughs> oh, bye, me. <laughs> and then Todd says he thought that Chad Jensen was up for something. Um, I don't know if he was or not, but I would I would assume that he would still be eligible, obviously, in the future for uh, any of the awards that he's not up for now. Like James Donegan, I'm not sure if he if he's won any of those or anything like that before, but he would definitely still be eligible for that. I think he has actually. I think he's already in the Hall of Fame. Okay. Thing. Yeah. So I mean, and well deserved, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Todd says Whiskey Charlie Award for Mediocre Channel, Gimpy's, Big Board, Moe's, and Wardrobe. There we go. <laughs> four, four channels enter, none leave. Heavy hits, <laughs> all four. <laughs> but uh, I think that, that and that's the end of the of the awards for this year. But I think uh, overall, I, I was glad to see them back. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing them again next year. I just think that I think they did a great job. There's a lot of um, work that went into it. I just think that it would be nice to see some oversight and clean things up a little bit. And that's why I said, I hope this year there's some, you know, learning experiences from this whole thing for them. Yeah. Maybe next year Monopoly can win best area control. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I mean, give me Ouch. a hard time. <laughs> you a hard time and then you throw that grenade, like pull the pin and love that shit. Look at that action. Pulled it, pulled the pin, cooked it and dropped it in your lap and Drop walked that. away. Thanks for playing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh come on u-boat was just it was painful when you really just sit down and you go through the whole thing the list one by one u-boat just got kind of painful towards the end of it yeah. and i was yeah. someone who liked the game so that yeah. that kind of hurt especially seeing it take away stuff from right. undaunted right. normandy right right and that, well that, this was funny is before before the show we're, we're we're chatting it and you're saying well you know i'm gonna i'm bracing myself for kev he's gonna be so hard on on your boat and, then, and all this sort of stuff and then at the very end you're like well i can't believe this but, so. it's easy for a one-off but with it like i said it's it's kind of looking like at a, a fat woman. You might see her from behind. Oh, it's a nice ass. And then you, oh my God, look at all of it. It's horrible. No. <laughs> when you see the whole thing together, it just, it, it's bad. Did he just say that? Can we edit that part out? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. It's forever <laughs> immortalized now online for right. Gimpy. Look, this but, is how a Marine's mind works, oh right? My God. This is how it percolates. I would just like to say, on behalf of all Wargamers, that I do not approve of that comment. So, uh, Kev said it to me before off camera. Y'all just didn't see it. <laughs> You're a bastard, Chuck. All but right. I, so. I think, though, it was great to see. I mean, it's great to see you both be acknowledged in the awards, but I think they just need to be in their proper category. Um, yeah. Being in the categories they were in, it just it really was not fitting, yeah. and it was frustrating for a lot of people, and it's going to be a butt of jokes, I think, for a while, and deservedly so. Uh, but that is not a reflection on Phalanx at all because they put out some great games and they just said to their backers, go vote for it, which anybody that's smart would do that. And they won uh, on all these categories. And, uh, you know, and that's just the way it worked out. But hopefully we'll see uh, a better situation uh, next year. And now we got some, it sounds like maybe YouTube is corrected. I'm just finding out now. Looks like it was a DNS issue. So. Oh, well, there you go. What, a, what, a, what, a, what an interesting time we live in. And mm -hmm. so... So now we can have U-Boat and Twilight Struggle as the number one and number two war games of all time. We can have that as as credibility for our hobby. Would you count Twilight as a war game? Uh, Even ab yeah, abstractly? No. Not doing that. Not having that conversation. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, so uh, one last comment from Todd. He says, Dan Gimpy, I was voting for sorry. So... YouTube and uh, not YouTube. Uh, uh, instead of Monopoly? Instead yeah. of Monopoly. It'd be not That's Monopoly. Right. Sorry. I was thinking trouble because you got the little dice bubble. So. <laughs> Which is the one that you did the pop thing? That was trouble. That, that was trouble? Yeah, I, I would go with trouble because I just love pushing the center button on that thing. And then Todd is recommending that Kev can burn you boat in his driveway as a live stream. I don't <laughs> think Kev owns it, do you? No, no, he doesn't. Kev, Kev, uh, 
uh, have looked at that pretty carefully and said, that's not for me. Yeah. I looked at it. I, I was on board with the whole idea because I think it would be a great group game uh, because I love subs. So, you know, and they, yeah. to me, it looked like a board translation of like, uh, what is it, Silent Hunter? You know, those uh, computer games. Yeah. 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 Well, it reminds me of the movie. I, I, I it was hoping it was going to be Das Boot, the movie. Yeah. With, with all that tension. And, and it's, there's a little bit of that there with the resource management and stuff like that and the cooperative gameplay, but it's not the. It's not that nonstop sort of action trying yeah. to see things and escape and all that sort of business. It is really Sonar has that. Now, Captain yeah. Sonar is a really, really fun game. Right. It's a really fun game with a group, especially if you're, you know, you got eight people and everyone's just talking and you're going right. nuts and right. just a lot of fun. Which which was being played one table over. Oh nice. And those guys were having five times the fun we were having, laughing at the guys who were trying to play this game. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I can see that, but uh, any any closing comments here before we close out for the night? Other than the fact that I have a splitting headache uh, yeah. and have for now 12 hours, no, I am so happy that we got to do this and talk about these awards, and I appreciate the chance to be here. Yeah. It's, awesome. it's always fun. Well, Nate? I just hope uh, Kev is going to be willing to do another show with me again after this one. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I think he'll do the U boat show with you. <laughs> no, I think this was good that we covered the the awards. I want to do more stuff like this. Yeah, yeah, we will. You next know, month we'll do another group. You know, just us. We're not gonna have a, a special guest next month. It'll just be us. Sounds good. And it'll be on YouTube. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, again, sorry to everybody who did. You know, try to tune in and maybe missed some of the show or all of the show or half the show or whatever that was beyond our control. That was YouTube went down. It was a global outage. I'm finding out it was a DNS issue and they have corrected it. So that's great for the people who are streaming, but uh, it did throw us off. So we went with the Facebook route. And for those who join us tonight, thank you for tuning in.